Well, good morning, good morning, good morning again, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the disclaimers, I did not check my TL between this video and next because I was cooling down from the whole library thing. So I'm just going to go straight through. This is probably going to be a relatively short video. In the description box, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much, they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill. Please read that article and share it on all your social media. You're also going to find linked in there Neuroclastic's public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding folks in case the JRC has the balls to see through of their threat. We also have linked in there the Ozark's first article in regards to Agape Boarding School, now known as Stone for Help Boarding School situation. This is a so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has been pending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it. All have been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services, and they include the following. Sodomy. Rape. Sexual assault. Child abuse. Psychological and emotional abuse. Child trafficking. Starvation. And that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor still on the premises with full access to the boys up on multiple, again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. You have an attorney general too busy trying to close down public libraries and keep kids from knowledge and chasing after drag queens to actually care about the proven pedophiles in this state. You've got a governor off his nut. So please read that article, share it on all your social media, and send help. For the last few people who remain sane in this state simply because we don't have enough money to GTFO. All right, we got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Koya's massive archive on the subject, Jennifer Masumba's behavioral sheet of shockable offenses, a clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002, the templates and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you've got young children present, please use your headphones. This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity on occasion. We speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they're watching this, very obviously, parental supervision is advised, all right? All right, trigger warning, we are about to once again descend into the mad ravings of the lunatic mind known as Dr. Matthew Israel. You're going to hear gaslighting, victim blaming, pseudoscience, and lies, all coming from a man with a massive ego and even larger God complex. So be prepared for the arrogant amount of stupid we are about to read. All right? Okay, where we left off last time. There are non-dangerous approaches to the management of dangerous or disruptive behaviors that do not involve infliction of pain. Fact! I know many of them. In fact, I was a major part of the movement to get person-centered planning as something that was the one of the main programs used out here. But let's read Dr. Matthew Israel's psychobabble, shall we? There are such approaches, however, they're not always sufficiently effective in treating the severest cases of behavior disorders. Here we go again. This is also used as a defense of ABA, by the way. It's this concept, but there are people that are just so severe that the only thing they understand is violence. It's a lie, folks. Very telling one. How many times have I said on this channel that behavior is communication? If one engages in a behavior, something's wrong. 
your job, doctor, as a doctor and a psychiatrist and psychologist is to get to that triggering point. But you never seem to get there. You'd rather punish the behavior and not deal with what's causing it. In fact, you refuse to even talk about it. You talk about how we're not willing to talk about certain things. I've talked about every single thing that you do in that place, sir. You still refuse to talk about any of the other programs. You spit in our faces. But we'll read the rest of this here. Two major reviews have shown that they are effective in the 60% of cases, leaving behind 40% with ineffective treatment. Again, doctor, but let's talk logic real world now. Not one treatment is going to be 100% fit for every single person that has a particular diagnosis. That's insane. Literally insane, okay? There are different treatments from breast cancer than there is for throat cancer. There are different practices and different treatments for a head tumor as opposed to issues with your gallbladder. It's like trying to use NyQuil to cure yourself of COVID. It's that stupid. 60% is actually very high, folks. Very high. That is a massive success rate. But that 60% he's talking about is not referring to some of the other options that I've brought up on this channel. It is ABA without aversives, period. That's all it is. It's not positive behavioral reinforcement of which he has admitted time and again he knows nothing. It's not person-centered planning. It's not any of the other things that we've gone over on this channel. It's not OT. It's not PT. It's nothing, okay? Studies claim effectiveness in treating these procedures are generally not performed on students who have severe problem behaviors. That's a lie, doctor. That's a big lie. I was working for the state in 2010, and I have been since 2008. The person-centered planning program that I helped build a platform for and send out far and wide in my state had been in use for at least two years at that time. And the majority of my consumers, to give you a number that I was working with, that was 90,000 consumers of every age in every bracket, male and female alike. The vast majority of them were on the positive were on the person-centered planning model. The others were on positive behavioral reinforcement. Doctor, would you like to know what our numbers were? Yeah. See, it's an interesting thing in medicine, in treatment, and yes, even in social work, when you can actually cater the treatment and the program to the individual with the diagnosis instead of trying to do blanket treatment like this doctor does. Because blanket treatments don't work because no one person with a specific diagnosis is the same as another individual with the same diagnosis because every human being is different. To give you an example, when I started my channel back in 2019, a few of my videos, you'll hear some background metal playing in the background. I stopped that and started to have silence in my background because many of my audience members at the time had their part of autism was that that background music was so distracting that they could not pay attention to anything that I was saying in the video. I myself have no issues with having both background noise while being able to concentrate on something else. I do have severe sensory issues in some areas and some auditory ones, but they're different. Crazy, right? It's almost like autism affects each individual who has it in different ways. 
This is why it's important in medicine to cater the treatment program and the programs that they get involved with via social work and Medicaid to the individual with the diagnosis. Crazy, right? It is insane that he continues to say, but it's not 100% effective because no treatment is 100% effective, doctor, and you know that. Come on now. Come on. Seriously? Really? And why is that? Because people are individuals. Which means each person who has the diagnosis is going to be affected by that diagnosis differently. Also, our so-called functionality varies from day to day, depending what's going on at the time. Crazy, right? I can't express how annoying I find it when individuals try to scream in my face, but it's the only way. Your way doesn't work. It's only so much effective. No, duh. Medical treatment should not be cookie cutter. Because no one treatment is going to work for everyone. Because not everyone has the same difficulties in the same areas. This is basic logic here. Basic logic. And by the way, doctor, trying to say, but, but, but for those with the severe problem behaviors, it doesn't work. It doesn't. It just doesn't. They went to the hospitals and nothing worked. Because... You refuse to look at logic. ABA refuses to look at logic. Autism is not a behavioral disorder. Doctor. I can't say that enough. It is a neurological disorder. It is developmental. Which means it's in here. Which means the behaviors I have... Are not the problem. At least not the root problem. They are a byproduct of the issue that is triggering them. Anyone with logic, instead of going straight to punishment, would try to figure out what that trigger is and how best to deal with that. But we can't deal in logic when we're dealing with Dr. Israel here. Doctor. I had 80,000 consumers under my belt. 80,000. Are you going to sit there and bald face tell me that not a single one of them had severe problem behaviors? Because if you believe that, I got beachfront property in Kansas I can sell you. Because I did, doctor. And you know what we did? very simple. We worked with them. We worked at getting to the root issues. But they're not verbal and with behaviors. You can't talk to them, says who? You? Mr. I refuse assistive devices to my students? Because you know what we did? You want to know the biggest frustration about the so-called severe autistics that was causing the bulk of the so-called behavioral problems? Communication. It was frustration that they could not communicate with the other person what was going on. So what do you do? The root issue is communication. If they're trying to tell you, I got a stomach ache, but they can't communicate that to you in a way that you understand, what do you do? You find other ways of communication through assistive devices, through sign language. And wouldn't you know it, when you do those kind of things and you provide that way of communication so that they could be able to tell you what is wrong, 
a lot of those problem behaviors went down. Big time. Big time. The ones that were still there and prop up here and there, because they do, folks. That's reality. You're never going to take it out of us completely. Please, for the love of God, start dealing in reality. <sighs> they could tell you, hey, this is what's going on. Through sign language, through assistive devices. And then you can then proceed to work on the issues. Dr. Matthew Israel and people like B.F. Skinner don't want you to work on the issues. That denies them money, denies them power, it denies them a chance to cash in. They are too busy trying to beat the symptoms out of their patients to care to solve the issue that's causing it. And again, folks, in my work with that many people, by and large, one of the biggest issues was the frustration of being unable to communicate. When you begin to teach them and help them find the methods of communication, a lot of things change. You wouldn't believe the changes in these individuals' lives. As soon as they had a way to communicate what was going on with them. But let me guess. These issues have been issued at length in Dr. Israel's premiere on adversives. Again, here we go. You cannot cite yourself as a source, doctor. You can't cite yourself as a source because you got a dog in the fight. Your actual livelihood depends on people believing your psycho ass. Therefore, there is an inherent bias in your so-called studies. And you refuse to address the fact that there is no one size fits all for all developmental disabilities, physical disabilities, and mental health issues. It doesn't exist. You can't even put two autistics on the same program and expect it to work the same way. Now imagine you run a school like Dr. Israel and you are trying to use the same treatment on the kid with autism as the person who simply just has PTSD or they have schizophrenia or they have bipolar. It doesn't make sense, doctor. What makes sense is catering the treatment to the individual. What makes sense is when you have issues, and one of the major reasons why these behaviors are coming out and becoming increasingly more violent is because you continue to assume that they will never be able to communicate, so you do not provide any method or way for them to learn. I've seen it with my own eyes. And before you tell me, but you've never dealt with anything severe. 80,000, doctor. 80. I've been in the houses of parents who had bars on the windows, okay? Do not tell me, I do not understand, that I've never dealt with kids as severe as yours because it's a cop-out, because it's a lie, because literally the numbers do not work. You want to say, but my program is 100% effective. Fear is 100% effective for time. And again, doctor, what happens when you remove the threat? Especially when one of the primary causes of these behaviors is the frustration in communication that you refuse to admit to or do anything about. And we're going to close on that. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. And as always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.